speaking about numbers, so we heard from Mr. Rudy presentation there are 40% uh, of mang mangroves lost in the last three decades and also there are 92% coral reef are treated and I think we have to do something to prevent this thing happen continuously. So now I would like to open Q&A session. Our online viewers also have the opportunity to ask questions via comment box of our streaming video. Uh, if you have a question to Mr. Udi, please raise your hand and mention your, your name and institution. Okay, madam, please. Uh, thank you very much. I think it's very impressive, Dr. Udi. Uh, I'm very happy that I will be able to join the, the lecture today. So I introduce myself, I'm Ina uh, from the World Bank Jakarta office. So there's two things that I would like to ask uh, uh, Pak Udi. Perhaps this is uh, the first one, perhaps uh, it's a more comment on the, what is uh, uh, your conversation or discussion with Pak Andi. I think I was surprised that uh, Pak Andi mentioned about 19.1 million hectare now. Wow, it's, it's excellent. But I think uh, we have to remember that I think this is, uh, as you also re refer, that it's all, not all is effective. Because as far as I know, usually what is the government do? It, uh, we, I think they, of course, set up the, the, the proposed the protected areas. And then after that, sometimes they forgot about monitoring or whatever uh, the management should do. So I think uh, we have to somehow help the ministry also, both Ministry of Environment, uh, Environment and Forestry, which is, I think, 10 still under the KLHK, right? And uh, the rest is under the Ministry of Fisheries and Marine and Fisheries. So because as far as I know, it's, uh, it's kind of very difficult also that they have to catch up. Uh, 20, but they target 2020 is 20 million, right? So I think we, this is a challenge, I think, because it's also, uh, to me, this is implementation of the law number 23, which is uh, not allow the district to establish the MPA. So now the province, the one has to responsible. So this kind of uh, difficulty, I guess, challenge for the government also to fulfill the 2020 uh, target, which is 20 million. That's the first. The second question, if I may, this is related to the sea grasses that I know that Pak Udi is really uh, expertise in this thing. So as uh, Wali Data or Data Guardian, I know that we have to refer to, uh, to the data provided by LIPI. Uh, the question is, you mentioned about the there is 5%, which is still in excellent, which is somehow seems like in the BIAC, or is, is that correct? So actually, what is the condition makes BIAC uh, seagrass is still intact or in good condition? Because uh, my understanding, my I, I'm very uh, low understanding. I'm uh, that seagrass is very dynamic. I, I think the habitat is easy to break, something like that. So, and then you able to uh, give like the status of the seagrasses in Indonesia. Uh, so how how this uh, the measurement? I think because I'm afraid tomorrow if I go in one area that you are putting in a map. There is no more sea grasses, something like that. Or there will be another sea grasses tomorrow in another area. I mean, uh, how then you justify this one and make uh, the map of Indonesia? Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Madam. Please, Mr. Udi. If I may to sit. Well, I'm answering. Well, I'm answering. Uh, the first comment about uh, the 20 million hectares target for the marine protected areas in Indonesia uh, in 2020. Yes, that was Pak Andi said in, when, when we had discussion. Uh, and that even, uh, that afternoon even uh, was a discussion session with Kompas. So with uh, uh, some journalists uh, and 
we don't we didn't talk more detail how effective uh, of each uh, MPAs but as I mentioned only about 15% are effectively uh, managed but then the rest is I don't know <laughs> it's it, it is challenging and that's true who in a uh, it's about uh, the well-designed uh, MBAs and then the monitoring and then uh, the involvement of the local communities and governance and fundings for for key part in, in, in achieving effective MBAs. <coughs> but thank you, Bu Ina, for, for, for the comments. About seagrass, yes, see, uh, not only seagrass, I think uh, marine ecosystems are dynamics and by saying dynamic that means we cannot forget uh, temporal dimension of that ecosystems temporal scale of that eco uh, ecosystem that means we have to add years <laughs> that's why uh, in, 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 in the slide I mentioned uh, 2017 because well, we cannot guarantee that in 2018 the, start, the condition would be the same. It's, uh, it's changing. And what parameters that we use to do the measurement? Uh, based on the ministerial decree from the uh, environmental, Ministry of, for the Environment, uh, 24, 2004, I think, if I don't... Uh, if I remember exactly, update the our method to to assess seagrass condition, and by 2019, I think we will deliver the new measure for seagrass health index. We call it seagrass health index, and we hope the, this will improve our measurement for seagrass condition. Uh, I think that should answer. Okay, do we have another question to Dr. Udi? Okay, madam, please. Thank you, my name is Handayani. I'm from Dharma Ina Mandiri as a consultant firm. This is really my pleasure to be in the correct class because I really would like to know more about the marine biodiversity and I'm happy to be here. First of all, I'm also very, very thankful of your presentation, very wide and at the same time, I'm very happy and also very sad. Happy in the sense that your first slide stating that um, Indonesia has more than 500 species, 70% of in the world, something like that, yeah? Total species in the world. But in your last or before the last slides, then it will be moved fastly. So I'm wondering, how can we maintain, how can we slower down the movement uh, away from our parts? So that's a challenging question, but thank you. Uh, thank you. So uh, in the last slides and about the, the future projections is that was more into how species diversity species in Indonesia cope with the global change. If you would like to, to slow down the local extinction uh, and the, the, lo uh, the movement, the shift in distribution, then we would need to decrease the RCP, the, the forcing, the radiative forcing, sorry. The radiative forcing is the, the energy that the Earth received from the, the from the Sun, compared to the energy that Earth radiates back to the atmosphere. RCP 2.6 means uh, it's a positive RCP, positive radi radiative forcing. That means we keep warm because it is positive. Uh, more we receive more than we release. And what makes this positive uh, radiative forcing? Greenhouse gas. Greenhouse gas CO2 emission. And about this, our next presenter, Intan, will, 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 will be talking in more detail. 
So we need to uh, to reduce the greenhouse gas emission. That's Okay, uh, sir, with the red shirt, please. My name is Royan Rias from Center of Bioscience Maritime, Jengkal Sudirman University, Purwokerto. Okay, maybe uh, to the point. First, uh, my question is, I saw uh, from your last presentation, I think last slide, you told that time to times, there is move uh, the, the what I mean the biodiversity will be moved from one place to other place or one maybe uh, ocean to other ocean or something like that actually I just want to know maybe this is very important for the next future for the future especially for uh, our country so what is the main factor uh, this biodiversity move one place to other place, times to times. This is my first question. And second is, you told in the maybe uh, first or second slide that Indonesia has so many uh, species for biodiversity, marine biodiversity. 500, more than 500 or something like that. This is current status, current status or uh, maybe I don't know this way. I just want to make it clear. Now, this is now or maybe last time or maybe the next. And about the species or population, I just want to know, in your opinion, we need uh, the, which one the, which one the most important? We, we have to protect the species, total number of species or total number of population. Maybe some species is very important for our, okay. Maybe this one, our, my question. That's uh, the first question about hopping, hopping biodiversity, hopping. Hopping, hopping is like jumping, you know, moving from one place to another place. Uh, what factors that drive this? movement. It's a geological setting, it's geological history. And the question is, when, when we talk about geological uh, setting, this is about habitat availability. So, uh, if there was no habitat at that time, then, then we cannot expect to be a, a hotspot of marine biodiversity. The formation of islands that creates new habitat for coast, uh, coastal species, for shallow water species. The, the formations of new islands also leads to a different, uh, different setting for water currents. Different setting for water currents can be uh, barriers for dispersal. Barriers for dispersal can create or can initiate speciation. Speciation that leads new that leads to new species. So geological history is is important, and we know that uh, Earth, the Earth crust is not stable. It's not uh, the Earth crust doesn't they don't so, sorry they don't stay still. They they always moving, and in here in Indonesia or the coral triangle is one of the most dynamically, ge dynamically uh, geologically dynamic region. You know, ring of fire and etc. The movement of the earth, the earth crust is so active. And it, it can be, uh, have a big impact in the long term, in an evolutionary uh, time scale. We are talking about millions of years. It's not like one, two, three, or a hundred years now. So, uh, the simple answer is the geological settings, geological history. <coughs> but human can also have an impact on, on, on the species distribution as we have seen. Uh, now, we are officially uh, entering Anthropocene. Anthropocene means the epoch era of uh, 
the human impact of on, on the earth is so big that it deserves to this era to be named as uh, Anthropocene. Previously Holocene, Pleistocene, and etc. Miocene and, 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 and etc. Now Anthropocene. That means human activities, human is so big and the impact is so big on, on Earth. The second question is uh, 500 species, more than 500 species. When? The temporal scale, the temporal dimension for these numbers is at the current state. So, at the current level, and now. Actually, the re recent estimate is uh, higher. Uh, data from the, the coral guardian data, Wali Data Karang Indonesia, Indonesian uh, guardian for coral data, uh, was about uh, 569 or something. I don't re remember exactly the number. But we, we, are, we, we are not sure if that number stays the same for the next 100. 100 years, the next 100 years, 200 years, uh, we don't know. And then, uh, which one is better, protect the species or population? Actually, uh, maybe, I don't know if you misunderstood the concept of species or the concept of population. Uh, population is a group of similar species that lives uh, in the same place, in the same situation, in the same uh, habitat. So by, by saying that I'm protecting the species, species A, for example, then I'm actually protecting the population of species A. A or maybe, I don't, if, I don't, if I get your uh, questions directly, maybe you are asking about the whole, the whole uh, marine species or just one or two species. Uh, then it's different, a different target. There are some, uh, there is no one size fits all. There are some scheme, uh, MBA scheme or MBA laws that protect only one species. For example, for race, a group of taxa, sorry, it's not one species, but a group of taxa. Uh, race, you know race? Uh, manta, that, uh, uh, the law states that uh, manta is protected. That means all over Indonesia, manta rays are protected. But if you uh, local based conservation like MPAs in Pulau Seribu, uh, uh, Seribu Islands, then it's uh, everything that is inside that uh, protected areas are protected, for example. So it's, it's a different way of, of of targeting the NPAs. Okay, since we don't have question from online, I would like to open another question, maybe from the back side of our audience. Anyone have a question? No? Okay. Please, miss. Thank you. From the, from the presentation, my name is Istikoya, I'm from IPB, Bandung. I would like to question about, the first question is, in the slide, about sea grasses, I would like to know about how about the variation of sea grasses, who, uh, which, uh, which the number of migration is zero point zero point, and then uh, there is information about problem because uh, migro migration or migration and mutation about sea grass. And as we know, seagrass is not only just a plant, but it also for animal who eat them. So we should to protect them. If you do mind, could you tell us about how to protect them? Protect the seagrass and 
I think the cigarettes is the plant, not only just a plant, but there's animal who uh, eat, eat the cigarettes. So if the cigarettes have a, 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 a increase or uh, increase, so the animal which eat them increase about that food. And how to protect all of them about the cigarettes? Perhaps not only for government, um, for person who focus in marine or student. And that's the first question. The second question is uh, uh, in this slide, there's information about research from Gather et al. on 2011. How about the new research? Uh, is that different member migration? Perhaps, uh, perhaps year by year there's a different of migration. So we should to know about the number of uh, different number and the advance of uh, number or increase about the migration. That's it. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. For the first question about how to protect the seagrass. Yes, seagrass is, uh, is important not by, not only by seagrass itself, but it's, it's because uh, for the sake of uh, animals that lives uh, in the sea, in, in, in this ecosystem, uh, for the sake of the ecosystem surface that was uh, that were delivered by seagrass ecosystem and, and and so many reasons that we need to protect seagrass. Now, how how do we protect seagrass? How do we conserve seagrass? I think that is the right, right question. How we conserve seagrass? Uh, based on the migration pattern, if, as you uh, mentioned, or as I if you have seen. Uh, we we know that we know that uh, the ancestral population is in the eastern part of Indonesia. That's the ancestral population, and from that ancestral population, it moves uh, to towards the west. So, if we would like to conserve seagrass, and we have limited funding, we have limited resource, we need to prioritize, and the priority should go to the eastern part of Indonesia, because that's the ancestral populations. And uh, populations in, in, for example, in, in Sahul uh, Sunda Sel, sorry, it's a younger population. And it has, it has a, a lower number of genetic diversity. One of the, one of the uh, main component for protecting Diversity is which one are the highest diversity, and this one is uh, receive a higher priority for for protection. And then another way to pro to conserve seagrass is we can do seagrass transplant, seagrass transplantation, and uh, one of the lipis station. I think regularly, annually, do some transplantation on, on seagrass, and it's, and it's good. Uh, the second question is about the migration for uh, the grouper. If I understand your question correctly, uh, this migration is based on genetic migration, gene flow. So it's not a real number of how many individuals that moves from one place to another place. It's the number of genes that moves from one place to another place. So we have a dif different time scale then. If we talk about gene, that means generation time. It's not uh, ecological time. Generation time is not the, 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 the age of the individuals. For example, uh, 
humans, human generation time is what 60, 60 or well more, 80, 80 years. That's one generation time. But if we talk about ecological time, that means one year, two months, three months. So it's a shorter period. So by looking at the gene on the generation time, we are looking a longer time scale. We are looking, we are having a wide uh, view of the migration. So it's not like, it's not really what is the current migration rate now, but it's in a longer generation time. So it's a, di a different way of looking at things. I hope this answer answers. Okay, audience, I don't think we have any time left for first session. And I would like Mr. Udi to choose to his favorite questionnaire so that we can give souvenir for, for them. So which one you want to choose? I have to choose two. Two of you. Buina, oh, there was there were four I think four four two two person oh mm. no no not Buina <laughs> <laughs> uh, the one from University of uh, Central Sudirman and the one from uh, consultant company. Okay, the winners, please join us to the stage. Okay, pictures. And another one. Okay, be, give big applause for them. And to end this session, I would like to invite our committee chairwoman, Miss Cory, to hand in placard for Mr. Udi. Mr. Udi, please join us. Also, one, two, three, yay! Okay, then thank you so much for your participation in our first session. Now I can give you a five minutes break for restroom breaks and please join us again at 11.05 for our second session. Thank you.